Chainsaw once again with NASCAR Thunder 2002. And this is going to be another quick race episode. In the last episode, we went to Watkins Glen International with Mike Skinner's number 31, Lowe's Chevrolet, which was requested by Puerto Espen, so shout out to him once again. In this episode, we are going to Rockingham Speedway, or as it's known in the game specifically, North Carolina Speedway, The Rock, with Casey Atwood and his number 19 Dodge Dealers Dodge. Apparently, he was a rookie in 2001 before Jeremy Mayfield got this car. But uh, yeah, this episode was requested by Josh S2000, so shout out to him as well. I'm kind of wondering if he's like a Honda S2000 fan because that's like my favorite car by Honda. You'd figure it'd be the NSX, but no, I, I like the S2000 more. It's just more sporty from my perspective. So this is going to be a 39 lap race. Uh, I did some preparation going to this track and these AI do not like giving you room and they slam the brakes almost half the freaking race down the back stretch. So. Oh, not excited for this because the contact is bound to cause me to get dumped into the wall, spun sideways a lot. And um, I almost won a race here whenever I was doing my season mode with Bobby Hamilton, which was amazing. And I was so pissed off because I wanted to win at least one race at a track that he won at in his career. I think he won four races in his cup career. And I was like, I think my last chance was at Rockingham. But uh, you now Casey Alwood, I, I wish we were doing this episode with Bill Elliott because Bill Elliott's obviously the more legendary driver and this is a legendary racetrack, but uh, this one is to Black Flag's matter because he's got a thing for Casey Alwood for some reason. Jimmy Spencer and his Kmart car will be starting on the pole next to Bobby Labonte. We've got a season mode with him and NASCAR Thunder 2003 on the way in 2019, guys. Just want to give you guys information about that. Green flag is out, everybody's hitting the brakes before turn one even comes. Ah, uh, are we making up a good four or five positions as soon as the race starts or something? No one's going anywhere. Uh, uh, okay, Michael Waltrip. But like I said, everybody's just like slowing down the back stretch and not giving me any room. They're all hitting me at the bottom if I try making a pass. So we've got to choose our passes, our overtakes carefully. Ah, uh, I can't pass right here. They're freaking side by side and they're gonna, one of them's gonna pin me at the bottom if I even bother. I think the best idea would be for me to try passing cars on the outside on my fresh tires going to turn three. Oh my god, y'all slow down and I get knocked sideways. I need to be able to get to the outside first. Ah, Michael Waltrip. Two Michael Waltrips. And the Bushery's Michael Waltrip is in front of the other one, but they're both doing poorly, so that's realistic. I'm going to catch up with these guys because everybody wants to just pick me off and make sure that it takes forever to make up one position. Uh, it's like... I know how this game works. You catch a pack of cars, and then one races you, and they make you leap behind everybody else. Did my car just slow down all on its own down the back stretch or something? Because I saw them slow down, but then I wasn't catching them anymore for a second. There's Bobby Hamilton right there, by the way. Trying not to run over Joe Nemechek in the turn one. Okay, we're overdriving the corner a little bit, but we'll be okay. Okay, let's give Hamilton room. So we're on the outside. This should be good for us in turn three. From what I've seen, it'll be pretty good for us. I got the pass on Shane Hall in the 63. Give me room, give me room. Don't bump into him, JC. See, now we're on the outside going to turn one. But, dive it down in. I was clear, but the game said I wasn't. That's hit detection for you. Oh, God, what is this up here? The Kenny Wallace just stacked everybody up or something. So that's 25th after just four and a half laps. So that's pretty darn good, I suppose. Let's try to keep on making passes cleanly even though I haven't really. It's one risky dive into turn one, because I honestly was hoping Shane Hall wouldn't be underneath me anymore. This is not a good idea. It's a freaking three wide, and Kirk Busch is not going to give me a room, you know it. Oh my goodness. It's the rookie stripes. It's the rookie stripes. They're giving me bad luck. I mean, for this track, this is good luck, but in general, this is just bad luck. These guys are driving so slow, I can't even avoid crashing into Johnny Benson. 24th. Uh, once Tyler comes in, I'm going to be losing like five positions or so before we take our pit stop. I know that from experience. That Once your tires get worn, you just can't really compete with these guys because it's hard to keep up. You can't make up positions anymore, and uh, the car becomes so fucking drunk. I just made four passes down the backstretch because of their stupid freaking programming. Oh, my goodness. And there's Bill Elliott. Looks like he's in 19th place. Really wish I was racing as a man. I know like this paint scheme is a little more decorated with its lime green and yellow and whatever, but... Still, it's Bill Elliott, so I think I'll get more views on this video because I'm racing with Bill Elliott because he's such a legend. You know, the whole Chase Elliott thing and whatnot, really continuing the, uh, the chain of the career storyline. Okay, so we got 19th. 
planning on making a pass on Jerry Nadu and maybe even Jeff Green in his next week Bush Series car in a turn one. Thinking about it, trying not to slide up into him. But we got 18. We'll be passing Jeff Green supposedly going to turn three. If this car stops zigzagging, I'm not even telling you to do that. So, never mind. Our, our biggest advantage is going into turn three. I've seen that very often going here just because of how much they slow down. If they hug the bottom, we can pass them on the outside. But on Warren Tires, I think it'll have to be on the inside to pass them. I'm really trying to pass Jeff Green right now, but it's just one-on-one -on -one right now. I can't be racing all these cars. It's like one just always has to hold me up. Uh, he's kind of sliding up into that middle lane, which won't be have enough room if I try passing on the outside. But we got around him. A little dirty, but we did it. Uh, car getting a little loose off the corners now. It's not wanting to stop steering because that's how tire wear works in this game. Once your tires get worn, the car doesn't want to stop steering and in some cases start steering. And Watkins Glen, oh my god, that was just really rough on me. It caused me to lose the damn race. I almost had it beat whenever I was racing Rusty Wallace off the final corner, but damn, it just didn't want to stop making its weird movements. So we're in 17th. Good race after completing 11 laps. I'll take my pit stop probably on like lap 19 or 20. I think it's really going to become quite the hellhole on lap 15, lap 16, because from what I've seen, that's where the tower starts becoming just way too hard to handle. Uh, which was just a little bit slower than tower, so that he's like, okay, this car is becoming undrivable, we'll take our pit stop right freaking now, like lap 20 and stuff, but no, it's like four laps before that. Uh, trying to make a pass on Sterling Marlin right now, but I don't know how to approach that. Kind of scared that they'll bump into me and I'll get wrecked and we'll lose a bunch of positions. Maybe I can dive into turn three right here. Nope, just going to the bottom. That actually lost me time by scrubbing off speed. I guess I'll just have to sit here in 17th until pit stops come because I can't really pass anybody now. Yeah, I'm fast because I'm really focused right now with these tires being worn. It's uh, very hard to hit my marks. It's like this car has a way of avoiding its marks, and I have to steer my way around its avoidance of my marks or some shit. But uh, yeah, I made it this far. People are starting to take pit stops at the end of lap 19. I'm going to go ahead and wait until the end of lap 20 just so I can say that I have a good, better run possibly until the end of the race. Just got to stay focused on corner entry. It's so hard to avoid the car sliding like that. It does. It wants to do more sliding than steering, but I made my tires last. Let's just get down pit road and have a really under driving way into turn three just so I can keep the bottom. Okay, 100 miles per hour is the speed limit at every track in this game. Slow it down, JC. Okay, we're good. Left tires, right tires, uh, don't seem to have very much damage, so that's a good sign. I must have been running a really good race if I don't have that much damage to repair at all. It's not going to take me any extra time. And I wasn't going to make any adjustments because the car was easy enough to drive as it was. Like, I don't want to try fixing something to make it drive better because this game's not realistic enough for that. Ugh. So, you don't get any pit crew mistakes in this game, but I think they can be either fast or slow. This is Casey Atwood, so I don't know if we're going to get a fast pit stop. What is it? 15.2 seconds? You know, I think that's faster than the average pit stop in this game. I think this should be like the same for every four-tower pit stop, so that's pretty darn good if you ask me. Now, I just got to get the speed, get on the track, adjust to fresh tires. Um, not underdrive corners because of how I used to driving on the worn tires. Got Jason Leffler or whatever the hell the name of this guy is right here. Maybe Chad Little. I think Chad Little is the 27 car. No one car is like Jason Leffler. Whatever. But we're in 24th and of course there are people down pit road right now so we're definitely going to be gaining quite a few positions. And there's Sterling Marlin. We were behind him before I made that cut so we actually did gain positions during our pit stop. So that's fantastic. Let's just not run over Jeff Burton. I'm trying not to, getting off the gas. So how is this all going to file out? Like, we're going to have more cars in between this gap between Jeff Burton and everybody else, or what? A dive bomb into turn one. Take advantage of my fresh tires. Uh, damn it. Jeff Burton's putting up a fight. Now I got Ward Burton underneath me. So much Burtonage. Lots of advantages and disadvantages today. Okay, there we go. Got past him. See Terry Labonte in the distance. 
And we're in 16th, so I can tell we did gain a few positions during our pit stop, and there are still people down pit roads, so but we are still gaining. Okay, we're running a great race. We are not going to win this race, though. That's not possible. Don't, don't tell me shit. We can't win this race. I started last place, and this is one of the harder tracks in the game. It's kind of illogically hard as far as tire wear goes, but, you know, welcome to Rockingham. It's freaking tire wear galore. Oh, goodness. I'm not getting top of the corner. That's me trying not to oversteer too much. Let's just catch Terry Labonte. Sure we can. Terry, Terry Labonte. Jeff Bird's over here freaking stalking me, so trying to give him some room. Aye, aye, aye. Don't get that close to me, man. I'm going to dive into turn three right here. Oh, goodness, that was a little too low, but we got it. Please leave me alone, Jeff Burton. I've got my own race to run. I'm faster if you let me focus. Ah, he's trying to apply that pressure, not let me go. Going for the pass on the outside of this 43 car. Another push series driver. Oh, bumped me a little bit. That was a racing incident, but we got into sixth. What about Labonte? Remember, Bobby Labonte started on the front row, right? So we should see him in a bit. Or maybe he's been losing positions, I don't know. I think I see him up there. He might be the race leader, actually. Oh, back bumper of the Kellogg's car is going to hurt me. This is Casey Elwood having a pretty darn good race here at Rockingham. I don't know about the win. That doesn't seem that possible because you know, by the time we make it up front, we're going to be getting more in tires, of course. It's just very difficult to pass Terry Labonte right now. Let's focus on making that pass outside of turn three. That's my plan. And he slammed the brakes. I didn't hit the brakes at all, pretty much, so nothing happened. Darn it. I hate trying to pass cars at this track. I hate racing at this track in this game. Simple as that. It is irrationally difficult. Jeff Burton is still behind me. It's like that 43 car. I don't know how he got up here because he's the Bush Series driver, of course, and even John Andretti's not supposed to be that good, so I don't know exactly how he got up here, but he's been falling back ever since. Ah, uh, we're right there behind Terry Labonte. I can make a pass into turn one if I want to, but let me guess he's not going to give me room, is he? Yeah. No. I had to dive in from the bottom and instead I just lose a bunch of time because of the positioning of my car. I can't make this damn pass. Come on, gain, gain, gain. Catching somebody is one thing, passing is another. Especially in this game. Ooh, good turn one. Yeah, shut up with the damn tires. I know how this track works. Mm. From the bottom, pull up in front of them. Not really a slide job, call it what you will. We're in the top five. That is not going to last. <laughs> That's going to cost me a lot of time. Maybe more positions than time, because there's no way I can catch the rest of the top five. Tony Stewart's been running a good race, making up a lot of positions. I remember passing him earlier, and he's right there behind me now. Terry Labonte's been dropping back since I passed him. So, yeah, it looks like he's just a slow driver holding everybody up. He's, he's doing the, the Ryan Newman before Ryan Newman was really doing his thing. Uh, just a few more laps to go. I'd be satisfied with a fifth-place finish after running this hard race, so let's just try to manage that top five. Bottom of the barrel for top five finishes, obviously, but... It still work for me. Just got to slow it down way before turn one. Tony Stewart, you would do that in 2001, huh? Oh, my God. And now he's getting runs off the freaking corner. Bumping into him a little bit. Rubbin's racing, of course. Uh, turn three is my strong suit. Okay. This time by, we've got two laps to go. This is going to be a long two laps with all these fucking cars behind me. And then Tony Stewart, Ward Burton, Jeff Burton. Uh, let's watch this me, Jeff Burton later. And the tire wear is critical, so that just means the end of my life. Damn it. Ward Burton just threw me into the outside wall. Jeff Burton rears me. I'm not very comfortable with this threesome. I can't drive in a straight line. I'm doing everything I can. They just threw my top five out the window by being so damn aggressive. Ugh. Even my top ten. I'm going to finish 12th now? Ward Burton, fuck you. Trash. And uh, Jeff Burton, you too, while I'm at it. Dive bomb turn one, crash into Jeff Green because I'm so pissed off and I want more positions. And bump into you. It's, you saw the way the car was driving down the back stretch. It's, I'm over here trying to tell it to straighten out, but it, no, it, it keeps turning left whenever I'm not turning left anymore, or turning right whenever I'm not telling it to turn right anymore. So, we're going to finish 11th here at Rockingham. Yeah, those last two laps were a hell of a I was predicting that very well. Tony Stewart took my top five. Dale Jarrett won.
by hitting the wall. And like a flip of the switch, tire wear critical. Ward Burton gets underneath me as I slide through the corner. He crashes into me and bashes me into the outside wall. I lose seven positions and we finish in 11th place. Couldn't have been a top 10. I blame you, Ward Burton. I I'm watching you, motherfucker. Ugh. Man, I just can't win with this freaking game. I don't know how long it's going to take me to win a race in this quick race series. It's like I've had two close situations at Texas and then Watkins Glen. I mean, maybe I choked at Texas. I can't say that I choked at Watkins Glen because this car's just doing things without my permission. It's like every single time something goes completely wrong for me, it's not me choking, it's the car choking. I don't know. <laughs> fuck this physics engine, man. And fuck these contact physics. People always talk about how awful the contact physics are in the new NASCAR heat games. No, this game works. I say so, because my word goes. Not really. I'm just joking. But if you have not yet requested an episode in this quick race series and how to become an episode, pick a driver we haven't raced with and a track we haven't raced at yet. And if you're the first one in the comment section down below, you'll see that episode coming out in a couple weeks. Other than that, thanks for watching. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.